Hello, my name is Jeremy Peterson. I am 40 years old and working on finishing my degree. And for this generational narrative video project, I have chosen to talk to my father, William Peterson, and my grandmother, Eileen Peterson. My first subject is William Peterson, my father. He is a male, 65 years old, and was born in 1949 in the small township of Daggett, Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula. His family of origin is 100% Swedish, and he was raised in Kearney, Michigan, with a population of about 300 people. He was went to college for one semester and then dropped out to join the military to fight uh, as he volunteered for the Vietnam War. He spent three years in the military, one of those fighting in the jungles of Vietnam as a crew chief and gunner in Huey helicopters. After that, he went back to college and finished his degree um, in education to be able to teach woodshop in high schools. After that, he uh, was most recently... My father owned several businesses throughout his life, such as a trucking company, a furniture building business, a log home building business, a taxidermy business, and he was a flight instructor for several years before com becoming a corporate pilot. He worked as a corporate pilot for about 18 years until he retired several years ago. Now he does some odd jobs uh, doing some remodeling work and some home inspections when he's not spending time with his grandkids and doing other things. For question two about recalling a uh, discussion about prejudice, um, when he was a child, my father said that they didn't discuss prejudice in particular, but they were taught to respect other people and listen to their viewpoints and be courteous. Where he lived, the population was 100% Caucasian. For question three about children being told one thing, but their parents or elders modeling another um, and unwritten rules, my father said that he didn't really experience this. His pa parents modeled what they taught the children, and they were very conservative. They often had people visit and sometimes live with them for a few months at a time that were from other places around the world. Some exchange students from Chile, one from Japan, many missionaries, and lots of politicians. So he had ample time to practice being courteous and respectful to other people. Question four was about the first time that my father encountered someone that was different than him. What was his reaction? He said that his family traveled extensively throughout the continental United States, and because of this, he saw lots of diversity, but he doesn't recall a specific reaction that he had, though figures that he likely stared a bit because some people looked different than him. But if they were able to interact, he always respected them as he was taught. Question 5 was about identifying any events that happened on national or regional level influenced um, his thinking about prejudice or other groups of people in general. The example that he gave was when President Kennedy was shot. He was very angry at the shooter for disrupting the country in such a way. He couldn't think of any particular events that swayed the way he felt about a particular group. Question 6 was about personal events that may have influenced his thinking. Uh, as I said earlier, Dad went to Vietnam, and he said that was probably the most influential event in his life. He said that the military is very diverse, and that didn't bother him because they fought as a team, and he didn't really think about that, and he didn't notice other people thinking about that a whole lot either. The only prejudice he really saw in the military uh, with other people um, in the military with him was that the drug people who used drugs were looked down upon and other people had prejudices against them because they felt that it was dangerous and they were putting other people's lives um, on the line because of their drug use. He also said that outside of the military that um, the people not, not fight on his team, that they all um, had a, a great hatred for the North Vietnamese people whom they were fighting against because of um, how brutal they were and watching so many of his buddies get killed by them. Um, but they, but he also mentioned that they aided and, and often housed South Vietnamese people that were run out of their villages 
and that he really enjoyed hanging out with the children. Question seven was about um, what he may have told his children about prejudice. Um, my dad's answer was that he taught my sister and I to respect everyone just as he was taught. He doesn't remember seeing us act in a prejudiced way growing up or in our adult lives since. I am sure though after some of the documents that I've read for class that on some level I've shown some prejudice at least unintentionally in small ways such as body language. Question 8 was about how the problem of prejudice in the United States has improved, grown worse, or stayed about the same during his lifetime. How have they changed and how have they stayed the same? My father feels that um, we were on a fairly even keel for a long time in the country, but thinks in the last seven or eight years or so, things have changed dramatically. He thinks that whites and blacks are very against one another, and this attitude is increasing at a rapid pace. Question nine was about who had the most influence on his views about diversity. My dad said that definitely his parents initially, and since then it would be his peers, mostly because of the shared background in the military and the way that he is often able to speak frankly with those people. He also believes that the media has a strong influence in general on the population and feels that they try to sway the way people should feel about other people, but he doesn't think they have succeeded in this plot, at least in his life. Question 10 is about uh, what, if anything, is his responsibility in combating, pre combating prejudice. Dad said that he thinks that he should be who he is and respect others and help teach his grandchildren how they're to act around other people with differing views. Question 11 was about how prejudice and discrimination should be handled in the future in the U.S. Dad thinks that we would get along much better in this country if the media wasn't involved. He thinks they try to swing people's opinions in negative ways. He thinks we have an innate nature to want to help others, but the media creates a bias which skews the way people behave and how they think. My second subject was my grandmother, Eileen Peterson. She's a female, 93 years old, born in 1921 in Tarot, California. Interestingly, she was born at the family home, not a hospital. Her family origin is 100% Swedish. Her grandparents moved to the U.S. in 18. Question two was, as a child, do you recall any, of it, any adult ever discussing prejudice with you? My grandmother said that um, she doesn't really remember prejudice being discussed, but that she does remember that a lot of people came to California looking for jobs because of the Dust Bowl, and many people around her um, did treat those people differently. But she also said that um, her church had an outreach program to help those people. She also mentioned living next door to some Japanese people, um, and they were very generous and helpful people, and she played with their children. She also remembers that Japanese were looked down upon due to World War II, and uh, she remembers when they were sent to the internment camps, and some of her friends that she had grown up with to that point, she couldn't see anymore. They weren't at school because they were at the camps. She doesn't remember ever seeing a black person until she had gone to college in Chicago. She also mentioned that there were a lot of Mexicans that lived in California, but they weren't really treated um, any differently like they are today. Um, back then, they were accepted. My grandmother went to Wheaton College where she met my grandfather. She had gone there to study um, music, mostly the organ and piano. After college, she owned a grocery store with my grandfather. She also did canning there and worked in the meat department frequently. She also, um, at various times in her life, worked as a musician at various churches and several other places and taught piano and organ lessons. Um, in college, she also mentioned working in a photo lab as a printer. Question three was about people telling children one thing but modeling another. Uh, my grandmother said that um, her parents were very conservative and lived out the same rules that they taught. She didn't remember them ever modeling something. Question four was about first encounter with someone different. She said she grew up next 
door to people from Japan, and so never really thought about that. But she did remember when she moved uh, away to go to college that she thought black people were interesting, and she probably looked them up and down because they looked different. But she didn't think differently. Question five about thinking back, identifying national or regional events. She mentioned the Dust Bowl and that the people that came to California after that picked fruit and did other odd jobs and picked cotton and that her church did a ministry to these poor people and it was a nice experience. World War II was probably the biggest thing because she said it was sad to see her friends go to internment camps but she didn't have bad feelings about Japanese. Her brother-in-law was a missionary in Japan just after World War II and her sister-in-law was born to missionaries in China and her parents had moved to Japan. In the 70s or 80s, she couldn't remember the exact date, she remembered getting to go to Japan with her brother-in-law for a few weeks, but my grandfather didn't go because he was still mad about the Japanese from the war as he fought in World War II. Number six was events in personal life. She only mentioned about the Japanese and that she um, was always friendly toward them and they were to her. Question seven about prejudice and talking to your children. She doesn't remember talking about it. Um, she didn't tell them too much about how to behave either. She did mention about inviting different people from other countries to live with them from time to time and that that was a good experience for her children to be able to interact with other people and respect them. She said they, she and her husband modeled how to behave more than really having a discussion. Question 8 about how prejudice has changed in the United States. Um, she says that she thinks it's changed and that it's gotten worse. She didn't feel prejudice growing up. Lots of Filipino, Japanese, and Mexicans lived in the town where she grew up. She thinks that the civil rights movement changed things positively, um, but that now there are much more diverse groups of people living in the country than there were when she was younger. She thinks that things haven't changed that much, um, really, but uh, overall, but when watching the news, um, she sees some change, but hadn't really thought about that from a prejudice perspective. Question 9, who had the most influence on her views about diversity? She said her church probably influenced her the most. The church was preached in Swedish, it was a Swedish covenant church, but children's church was in English. She spoke English at home, but her parents spoke Swedish to each other and their parents. Her mom didn't feel comfortable speaking Swedish, she thought they should speak English. Question 10 about uh, her responsibility in combating prejudice, she doesn't really think um, that she has any because it wasn't talked about and she had diverse neighbors and they got along well. Um, she seemed a bit confused about this question and she talked about the town she grew up had 5,000 people and over a hundred churches that um, the different people from different um, different um, backgrounds congregated for church events with similar people, but then the rest of the week, everybody mingled together. And Last question, my grandmother said that she doesn't think there should be prejudice in the United States or anywhere, that people should ignore differences and just get along. For my closing remarks, I think I'd like to say that it was interesting to, even though I talked to my dad every week, I got to learn some things about him and about my family that um, I hadn't heard before. Um, so it was interesting to have a conversation about prejudices and to see his reaction to those. Um, I also uh, thought that talking to my grandmother was, was extremely special because she just got a new hearing aid and was actually able to have a phone conversation. We spoke for over an hour and um, she's being as old as she is, I had to um, be gracious to her and, and let her talk. Um, and then condense down her thoughts pretty frequently. But it was a really positive experience. I got to learn more about my family and my background. And it became more clear to me why I never really thought a lot about prejudices or never really felt prejudice towards people. Um, you know, I guess in life we all see stereotypes and learn about stereotypes, but I never really was forced to think about that before taking this class. So 
think overall it's been a very positive experience and um, I look forward to uh, other other subjects.